So in this video, we're going to talk about the emission of photons. And we'll see in a moment how that's related to waves. But let's, uh, let's do a, an example for a second. Let's say we've got a nucleus, right? This is the nucleus of an atom. And typically, a nucleus of an atom, an atom will then have uh, electrons around it. And so let's, uh, let's draw electron shells. And this, if we remember, this is the Bohr model of what an atom looks like. So what happens is we've got some particular electrons, right? And these electrons, let's say these electrons are here. Obviously, electrons are much smaller than the nucleus usually. In fact, you wouldn't be able to see them at this scale. Uh, if this were the size of the nucleus right here, you wouldn't be able to see the electrons. But for the sake of this, we're going to exaggerate them, their size. Uh, so electrons are here. And what happens is, let's say uh, the, let's say our atom absorbs an amount of energy. So we've got, we've got some energy. And what's going to happen is that that electron is going to move to a higher energy state. So the electron is going to move to this state. And then what happens is that when the electron jumps back down, it's going to release energy. And so we can draw this, uh, we can draw like this uh, on, on the actual atom, but we can also draw the, the orbitals a little differently. So, whoops. So we can draw the orbitals, we can say this, we can say that we've got electrons here, right? Let me draw it a little lower. Let's say we've got electrons here, right? And what can happen is that the, this is an empty higher energy orbital. And so those electrons can jump up to higher energy orbitals, and then inevitably they're going to jump back down. And so there might be high, even higher energy orbitals here. Um, there might be another electron here, right? And it could jump up here. And so the electrons can jump up to higher energy orbitals, and then they can jump back down. And depending on those orbitals, uh, that's always going to release energy. And depending on the difference between them, it's going to release a certain amount of energy, right? And that energy gets released in the form of a photon. So photons, what exactly is a photon? A photon is essentially, it's essentially a particle of light that also behaves as a wave. And so for the purposes of the MCAT, let's just consider that photons are essentially waves. And so when they're released, they're released as waves. And so what are the properties of these photons? Well, what is a photon exactly? A photon is essentially a wave of energy. Uh, and so the amount of energy in the photon can be written in terms of this equation. Energy, let me make, the, let me make a more clear marker. So let's make it a little thicker. Energy equals H times F. So that's energy of the photon. So let's do that. Energy of photon equals H. And H is Planck's constant. And typically, the MCAT will give you Planck's constant. Uh, the MCAT will give you Planck's constant. But for the sake of uh, this MCAT, the, typically the Planck's constant is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34. But again, on the MCAT, you'll usually be given that. And then that's times frequency. Frequency is usually written in hertz, right? Energy of the photons written in joules. Frequency is written in hertz. And Planck's constant. And Planck's constant, the units for Planck's constant are typically given in joules per hertz, which is, you know, makes sense compared to considering that this unit is joules and this unit is hertz. Sometimes we'll, we'll be asked to convert between, uh, sometimes we'll be given energy in a different unit and we'll be asked to convert. And so that conversion you would just want to do, um, you just want to do that conversion as fairly typically using uh, dimensional analysis or using uh, typical conversion factors. But uh, yeah, so we've got joules, we've got joules per hertz, and we've got hertz. And so this is how you determine the energy of a particular photon. Uh, again, we have energy. Well, typically on the MCAT, we'll be given one of these two values. So you want to look for either energy, some sort of unit for energy, or we want to look for hertz, the frequency of the, um, of the particular photon. And so we can see one of, the, one of the points I want to make conceptually here is that the frequency of, uh, so we see, let me rewrite that here, energy equals HF. We see that as frequency of the wave increases, so does the energy of that wave or the photon. And so we can understand that as 
if we've got two waves, one looking like this, right, and one looking like this, which one has the higher amount of energy? Uh, well, the answer is that this one, this one sends out a lot more energy um, per second than this one does, right? And so this ener this wave in general is going to be higher energy. So in general, a higher frequency equals a uh, uh, a higher amount of energy. The last point to make here is that sometimes on the MCAT, we won't be given frequency, but we'll be given wavelength, right? And so instead of giving us frequency, um, they'll give us they'll give us one of two values, some some value that can help us calculate frequency. So perhaps, for example, and they want us to calculate energy, but they're not going to give us frequency. So what values would they give us? Well, there are a couple of ways we can determine frequency if we're uh, from other values. And one of those, as we saw in a previous video, is that speed of a wave is equal to uh, frequency times wavelength, right? And so from that, if we were given speed and wavelength, then we could calculate energy, right? Because we could calculate frequency, and then we could plug that in for to, into this equation for weight for frequency. Another way we could do this, one more variable that we didn't mention in the last video, in the video on uh, on waves, but we should have mentioned, um, and we'll mention it now, is the concept of period. So period is equal to one over frequency, right? So as we said, frequency is uh, hertz, or frequency is also the number of the number of waves that pass a particular. So as we know, waves are always moving in a certain direction, and so frequency is the number of waves that will pass any one point per second, and so it's uh, essentially per second. The units are per second, and uh, period is one over that. It's the inverse of that, and so what that means in practice is it's the number of seconds required. Uh, so we can say, let's say waves per second. Uh, and uh, period is seconds per wave. That is to say, the number of seconds it requires for, for a wave to pass uh, a particular point, right? And so uh, anyway, so the point being that if we're given period, period is always given in time. So the unit of period is seconds usually. Um, important thing is it's time, right? Uh, and if we're given period, we can figure out frequency. It's just one over that. And so um, these are a couple of conversions that we might have. If we're not given frequency directly, but we're given period, then we can figure out frequency, one over frequency. Uh, we can figure out frequency, one over period. Um, and if we're given, we're not given frequency, but we're given the speed of the wave and its wavelength, then we can figure out frequency using the equation over here. And that's all we need to know as far as energy uh, of a particular photon uh, when given its wavelength.